I want to talk to you about some strange characters in the scriptures. Just a few. There's a lot of them. And these strange characters, if you ask the average Christian about them, they're not going to know who they are, where to find them in the Bible, because most times they're tucked into the parts of the Bible that people usually don't read. And I think that God puts them in there to give people that do read the Bible just a huge blessing tucked away in there. And some of them, it's only one verse. Some of them have a few verses scattered throughout the Bible. And you're going to find a lot of them in First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. And this first one is in First Chronicles 20 and verse 6. It says in First Chronicles 20 and verse 6, And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand, and six on each foot. He also was the son of the giant. So this giant here with six fingers and six toes is the first strange character I'm going to talk to you about. Now, it doesn't get much stranger than that. A giant with six fingers and six toes. Maybe the giants had devolved and were turning into something that's was just nowhere near as good as what they were back there in Deuteronomy and Genesis 6. But notice, just break down the verse. When you're reading the Bible, you know, used to I would just read through the Bible when I first got saved. And I'd read through the New Testament like 12 times in a year or 7 times in a year. And I would never just stop to look at each phrase much. Now I find myself studying the Bible more, really looking at each phrase and each word, and you can get so much just out of a phrase. In 1 Chronicles 20 and verse 6, the verse 3 words say, and yet again. That just really jumps off the page at me, and yet again. You see, yet again, it is a daily battle. Every day you wake up and you're going to go to work or school or wherever you go and you're going to find that yet again the thorn in the flesh is bothering you yet again you got this teacher this supervisor this unclean spirit is on your back bothering you it's a daily battle and you'll face the giants again and again and again and that's why in 1 Corinthians 15 31 Paul said I die daily you got to die to the flesh daily because once you wake up yet again, there's the flesh. As soon as you wake up, he wakes up. And he says, go back to sleep. He says, stay home today. He says, put the covers back over your face. And yet again, there was war. Yet again, there was war. Every day you get up. Just like First Chronicles 20 and verse 6. And yet again, there was war. Paul talks about that war. The flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other. And yet again, there was war. And yet again, there was war at Gath. You see, Paul told Timothy to war a good warfare in 1 Timothy 1.18. Paul told Timothy he's chosen to be a soldier, 2 Timothy 2.4. You see, and yet again, there's going to be war and that's what the mighty men of David were facing was war every day they would get up and they would face war and you as a Christian your wep the weapons of your warfare are not carnal every day you wake up you're going to face war and this particular one he got up that day and he saw a man of great stature. And yet again, there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature. So this is a big problem. This can picture a big problem in your life. And this is not a BFG. You know, a BFG is what they call a big friendly giant. There's no big friendly giants in the Bible. 
This is a big problem. But the thing about this problem is God is greater than the problem. In 1 John 4, 4, it says, You have God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Even though this is a big problem, the Lord is a big problem for the big problem. Psalm 147 and verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and have great power. His understanding is infinite. He's bigger than the big problem. He sees our big problems as total lightweights. They're total lightweights to him. Second Corinthians 4.17, it says in 2 Corinthians 4.17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. See, it says light affliction. While we're looking not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You see, he calls them light afflictions. To him, our afflictions are for a moment. Because one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. You may be going through something for 20 years, but for the Lord, that was just for a moment. In light of eternity, in light of where he dwells. So this man of great stature in 1 Chronicles 20 and verse 6, this is just a small, lightweight guy here. It says, And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand, and six on each foot. He also was the son of the giant. So your problem may seem so scary and unusual that you think you're the only one going through it. Most likely, when he got up and saw that man of great stature with six fingers and six toes on each hand and on each foot, he's probably thinking, I'm the only one person going through something like this. I'm the only person facing a guy like this. And that's what you think with your problems. You think this is so strange and unusual that I'm the only person going through it. But that's not what it says in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9, where it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You see that? The same afflictions, the same thing you're going through, the brethren are going through that are in the world. Most likely somewhere, another soldier of the Lord's army was facing a giant just like that. So First Chronicles 20 and verse 6. Just so much we've already got from a verse that no body even knows about most Christians don't even know about and yet again there was war at Gath where was a man of great stature whose fingers and toes were four and twenty six on each hand and six on each foot so he's got six on each hand and six on each foot now look at this look at all four phrases that we just looked at where it says Six on each foot. Count the letters there. That's 13 letters. Six on each hand. 13 letters. Then it goes on to say, Son of the Giant. 13 letters. So you see, the I've talked to you about before how the Number of rebellion is the number 13. And just looking at these phrases here, you see 13 letters in the phrases. Then you can take it a step further. We're in verse 6, 1 Chronicles 20 and verse 6. So you got a 6 there, and then you got 6 on each hand, 6 on each foot. You got 6, 6, 6. 
So this guy, this man of great stature, he's connected with 666. He's connected with the number 13. And he's connected with... He's, he's connected with the giants. So what is he a product of? Obviously the devil. Just count those. And you'll see the numbers in the Bible even represent something. This picture's a product of Satan. You see, God allows the messengers of Satan to buffet us, 2 Corinthians 12, 7. And it seems as if there has always been a thorn in my flesh, just like this guy. You know, everywhere you go, whether it be in school, as a Christian, you've always got a thorn in the flesh to cause you trouble, to keep you humble. You go to school, you got somebody just constantly trying to get you in trouble, spread rumors about you, saying things about you that aren't true, you know. You go to work, you got a supervisor or a co-worker that's just constantly giving you trouble. Even when you're almost to be in a good place at work, you got that thorn sticking you in the side. And yet again, you wake up, there he is. And yet again, there was war. A man of great stature. Maybe he's a big shot at the place you work or at your school. Whose fingers and toes were four and twenty. Six on each hand, six on each foot. He's, he's unusual. You don't know how you're going to get around him. He was a son of the giant. Maybe he's a son of a a big shot there you know how you can come in contact with these people their their dad or their mom is a big shot at the school or at the place you work at and they just cause you trouble and they get by with everything well that's what this mighty man was facing a man of great stature but look what it says First Chronicles 20 and verse 7. But when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, David's brother, slew him. So he slew him. This man of great stature with six fingers on each hand, six on each foot. Man, he could have got a hold of him by the neck and just choked him really good. But the Lord wrought a great victory. So that's the first strange character, the giant with six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. Now, nobody really talks about that guy. Nobody really knows about that guy. But you get a lot just from one verse. You saw how just you just break down the verse. And you get so much truth from that. You see, every word of God is precious and true. And you can't just look at, you know, 1 Chronicles and say, oh, I hate 1 Chronicles. Or, or 1 Samuel, 1 and 2 Samuel, say, I hate 1 and 2 Samuel because of all the names and things like that. Tucked away in there, you got all these great characters, all these great stories. And that's, I'm going to go ahead and stop there with that first strange character. And the next one we'll go look at is the giant Egyptian.